Okay, so this video will be about the 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 factor group of the normalizer by the centralizer uh, theorem. Okay, let G be a group and H a subgroup of G. Okay, I'm going to recall quickly what the normalizer is. So the normalizer, so we should say the normalizer of H by G, right? This is normalizer of H is the set X in G such that X inverse element, this is a subgroup, X equals X. Okay, so this is the normalizer of H in G, and the centralizer of H, centralizer, written this way, centralizer of H in G, will be the set of x in G such that x inverse element H x equals H for all H in the subgroup H. Okay, now we consider a mapping that takes us from the normalizer of H to the automorphism of H uh, given by G taking to phi of G where this phi of G is the this phi of G is the inner automorphism of H okay induced by G better to write this so phi of G, phi G of H will be the, the inner automorphism. So it will be um, G inverse H G. I hope I'm not writing this the, the other way, but it's okay. For all H in or all H in the subgroup H. So this mapping, <coughs> this mapping is a homomorphism. And what is the the kernel of this um, homomorphism? Well, the kernel is the centralizer, right? The kernel is the centralizer of H, clearly. Okay. And so, by the first isomorphism, by the first isomorphism, um, by the first homomorphism, sorry, by the first, let me, by the first, first homomorphism by the first homomorphism by the first homomorphism theorem um, we can say that the factor group uh, the normalizer by the centralizer of H is isomorphic that's why I, I wrote isomorphism here uh, so, the factor group of the normalizer of H, of G by H, um, or the normalizer of H in G by, so the factor group of the normalizer of H in G by the centralizer of H in G is isomorphic to a, um, to a, 
subgroup of a the automorphism of H. In one of the previous videos, we saw a theorem where we saw some properties of homomorphism. And the, the corollary was this very important uh, fact that kernels are normal. So if phi is a homomorphism from G to G, from a group G to a group G bar, the kernel of the homomorphism will always be a normal subgroup of G. So kernels are always normal subgroups of the group. Now we could conclude this, this part of uh, the group theory uh, checking if the converse of this statement is also true. Meaning, so the corollary said uh, that the kernel of every homomorphism, the kernel of every homomorphism of a group, is a normal subgroup, the kernel of any, uh, homo uh, a, any homomorphism of a group is a normal subgroup of the group. And we are going to check now, and I'm going to call this a theorem, that normal subgroups are kernels. Here we saw that the, the kernel of every homomorphism from two groups is always a normal subgroup of the group. Now we are going to see that all normal subgroups of a group are kernels. <clears throat> and we will see that in particular a normal subgroup N is the kernel I'm going to write this down. So in particular a normal subgroup N, normal subgroup, so this N is the normal subgroup of G, is the kernel of the mapping phi from G to the factor group of G by the normal subgroup, where uh, with this mapping taking G to G product by left product of the, the, the normal. Okay, uh, the proof for this is really simple. Um, we take a map, we map G into the factor group of G by the normal, where phi of G will be normal times G. Uh, this is this is usually called the natural the natural homomorphism called the natural homomorphism from G to G by the normal. Okay. So, we define phi as taking from the group G to the, the, uh, the factor group G by the normal, dividing this, the natural homomorphism. So, this implies that phi of x, sorry, let me erase this, phi of xy equals so it will be normal of xy and that is normal of x normal of y and that is phi of x phi of y so phi
phi of x, y equals phi of x, phi of y. Okay, so every normal, if you take any normal subgroup, will be a kernel. 